As I mentioned earlier, my supplier portal supports both English and Spanish because I've configured internationalization at the org level. Now let's take a look at what this looks like to set up. Inside of my internationalization settings, Retool takes a file-based approach to translations. So many of our customers already have JSON files for their translations. Here you can upload your translations to the org level, preview them for any given locale. Retool also syncs these translations to Git so that if you upload this at, you know, let's say your development environment, um, your applications will remain the same and work in production. Now let's take a look at what this looks like at the app level. The first step to enabling localization at the app level is to go into your app settings and flip the toggle. By default, Retool will pull in all the translations uploaded at the org level, but you could specify a subset if you want your applications to be more performant. You can also preview those translations inside of the settings. Retool also makes all of your translations available within the Retool context variable. So as you're building your app, you get autocomplete and are able to see everything that you have available to you. By default, Retool pulls in only the translations for your given browser locale for performance reasons. Now, within the application itself, let's take a look at the text component that I have internationalized. Here, Retool actually initializes the IE10N library, and this uses IE10Next underneath the hood, which gives you a lot more functionality than simple translations. It gives you interpolations, dates, currencies, and more. So, all I would need to do to set up internationalization is to take all of the text that I see in my application and wrap them in this function around IETNet. And that's pretty much it. Because everything is synced to Git, any changes that you make should work out of the box from development to production.